No, I thought to myself, shaking my head viciously. I backed away from the key, despite it whispering to me more and more. I quickly left the room and locked the door as I swore I saw something reaching out of the drawer. I sat down on the other side of the door and put my head between my legs, cowering from the voice despite its volume never decreasing. Please, help me. A voice that resembled Henry said, What did I do wrong? Michael's voice asked. Please just leave me alone, I shouted as I opened the door to my room, revealing everything looking completely fine. It took me a few seconds to realise what was going on. I accidentally let the key communicate with me during my lapse of judgement. I quickly closed the drawer and made my way downstairs and made myself some leftover spaghetti for dinner. Since the incident, my boss insisted I took an extended break from my job until I got better, as if I'd get better with the book and key in my house, but I can't bring myself to pick those things up again. Never again. A couple days passed and I felt hours blending together. I couldn't stop thinking about those voices. And suddenly, it hit me. Henry and Michael were both in the same mental hospital, St. George's. I reluctantly entered my room after wearing some protective gloves that could handle high temperatures. Last time I picked up the buck and keys, it had started oozing out a reddish liquid that burned my skin. I figured that out the hard way. I concluded that the thing got stronger every time it drove people insane or whatever. I picked up the book and key, jamming my ears with headphones to not be affected by the key's words. I got a taxi and soon enough, I was on my way to St. George's. As I made it to the mental hospital, I was greeted by the founder, who was the billionaire, George Rintoro. We talked a bit and he showed me around. He seemed like a nice guy, but there was something off with him, but I didn't know what. After our discussion, he told me he happened to be coming here today to check up on the mental hospital, and I was able to go see Michael, but not Henry for some reason. I entered a room which was decently furnished, and Michael seemed to be fine. Um, Michael? I asked. He suddenly turned to me in an odd motion that could only be defined as robot-like. Hello there, Kyle, he said enthusiastically, as if nothing wrong had happened between us. I was wondering if you wanted to talk about the events that happened a month ago, I asked cautiously. Sure, he said plainly. When did you come in contact with the key? I asked. What key? He asked, confused. What about your diary? Did you write anything odd during that week about a month ago? I asked, trying to keep calm. No. Are you feeling okay, Kyle? He asked. I'm fine. I think I'll go now, I said. Why so soon? I was hoping to talk to you about something, he said. What do you mean? I asked, clearly wanting to get the hell out of here. Take out your headphones so you can hear me better, he said. I knew something was wrong. I could hear him perfectly fine, and he knew that, so that only meant one thing. That thing wasn't Michael. It was a key trying to trick me. Suddenly, someone tapped on my shoulder. I reflexively turned to see George Rintoro looking at me as if I just slapped him in the face. Why so jumpy? He asked in a light tone that had a British accent. He adjusted his dirty blonde hair to the more appeasable look and adjusted his tie on his business suit. No reason. I think I should go, I said quickly. Is Michael creeping you out? He has been saying some strange things ever since he got here, George pondered. Do you know what's wrong with him? I asked. He raised his eyebrows at me. I thought you'd know, since you have encountered each other before. Wasn't he your friend or something? Silly how you act so calm and collected, but get freaked out by him saying nonsense. Maybe you know something everyone else doesn't, he rambled, and then shot a question at me. I was shocked and couldn't think of any response. Hmm. I'll be seeing you real soon, Kyle Brent, he said, and walked away after closing the door that allowed me to access Michael. I quickly left and returned to my house, now with more questions than answers. It had been about 24 hours, and this has been leaving me uneasy for some time now, but... How did he know my last name, when we only met half an hour ago, and I only said my first name when he asked who I was? And... Why was Michael being used like a puppet for the key to communicate with me? What were those voices I heard earlier, and why did it sound like they were genuinely talking to me? 
I threw the book and the key into my dresser drawer and realised that the book has been slowly burning through the drawer and it wouldn't be long before it melted through the wood. I honestly don't care right now, since that is the least of my worries. The key has been getting louder, so much so that I wear my headphones more often than I don't. I think I'm going to try communicating with the thing tomorrow, but for now, I need some well-earned sleep.